Hill. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Oh, man. Steve Harvey got a radio show because God, because God is simply amazing. Because God is off the chain. Because God is over the top. Because God is all that in a bag of chips. God is amazing, man. God will take you places that you never, ever thought you would go. Oh, you know what? It, it Sometimes it amazes me when I'm watching uh, people talk about themselves and their careers and where they're at in life and things. And, they, and, and, and I hear people say, you know, always dreamed of being here. You know, I can understand when a person says that. I've, I've always dreamed that of something like this would happen to me. But I want you to think about that for a second. <sighs> Did you really see it just like that, though? Did you really, really see it just like that? Did you really know that God was going to bring you through all he brought you through to get you to this place? Did you know that in spite of the losses along the way that would crumble the average person that somehow he kept you through it all and that's how you got here? Did did you think of, you know, I mean, I mean you know, you know, I mean, since you're so busy talking about yourself now, have you forgotten all the times he was bringing you through when you didn't see no way that you was going to get through? Do you remember that? So when you sit there and you say, I dreamed of this, this is what I always saw happening. I don't really think so. I don't really think if you take inventory, a real close inventory of your life, and you look back on it all, stop looking at the moment right now. Remember where you come from. See, that's what gets me emotional sometimes. That's what makes me tear up because when something is happening to me in the moment, it ain't the moment for me. It's the memory of how I got there. It's the recollection of all the things, all the nights, all the days in that car, all the times by myself when I felt like I wasn't going to make it. But somehow I'm standing somewhere and somebody passing out an award to me or somebody calling my name. That's that. Did you really think you was going to make it then? So, 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 so since you're talking about this is what I always dreamed of, did you really think? in those moments right there that you would even be standing here today. That's why I try to I try to give people to understand, you know, and 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 this is kind of for young people today, um what I'm about to say, but then guess what? I sometimes I had to remind myself of it. So I guess it's still kind of for everybody. You know, because I, w- I work with a lot of young people and, and 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 so many times man, young people just don't understand um what all it takes. And I know that if you're a full grown adult, if you're 40, you, you really understand where I'm coming from because, you know, uh, you, it's, it, listen to me, young people or anybody that don't understand this, that you got to do some things that you don't want to do in order to do what you want to do. You have to understand this principle of success or else you are not going to become successful. I got what you want to do. I got your ultimate goal is this, that, and the other. I got all of that. But in the meantime, though, there are some necessary steps that you have to take in order to become successful. And you cannot skip these steps. You can't jump over these steps just because you, you want to be rich Friday. I got that. I got that. I, I, I Everybody got that. But if you want this, whatever you're talking about, whether it's money or success or fame or Climbing the corporate ladder or this is the position or you uh, all that's fine. And then P- please hold on to your dreams. Dreams come true. But in the meantime, let me remind you of something that you got to do some things you don't want to do in order to do what you want to do. Let's say you want to be rich and famous. Let's just say that's it for you. Let's sit down. It's a lot of other ways of being successful. Please don't think that's the only one. But I'm just saying, let's just say yours is rich and famous. And let's say some miraculous way, God made you rich and famous next Friday. Ta-da, there you are. You rich and you famous next Friday. Can I share something with you? This is not going to last for you. You know why? Because you have not done the things necessary 
You have not done the things that you have to do in order to do the things you want. So now you're rich and famous. How you going to know how to budget money? How you going to know how to get up and, and keep clawing towards the top when you fall off your pedestal? See, it's so many things you got to know about something. And you think because it's what you want right now, it's supposed to happen just now. It's a process. When you ask God for something, please know God know the process. He know the necessary steps to take you through. Don't lose your patience with God because your dreams ain't coming true right now. Man, I, I, I you know, you know, I, I think the best way, y'all, is, is for me. I just use myself as an example. I, I really do understand why God has given me the life he's given me so far. I understand the being homeless part now. I get the not being successful when I want it to part. I'm going to let you make some of these stupid decisions you want to make, and I'm going to make you learn from them. I'm going to... I'm a, I'm going to let you be homeless for a little while. I'm going I'm to let you not get into your field of choice until you're 28. I'm going to have people talking about if we had only seen him when he was younger. I ain't going to let you get your first car in your name till you're 38. I'm going to make you go through some things because one day I'm going to put a microphone in front of your mouth. And I want you to honor me. I want you to talk about me. I want you to tell people what I brought you through. I want you to give people inspirational moments where they can see that your life was jacked up for a minute and I turned your life around for you. That's God dealing with me. See, so now I finally understand why I went through the life I went through so I can have something to say. See, I ain't over here telling you about what I think will happen. I'm telling you what I know can happen, that God does make dreams come true. But sometimes it take a minute. Sometimes you're going to have to do some things you don't want to do in order to do what you want to do. All right. I'll let you. I'm going to be tripping today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Sign, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, last time. This is it. I ain't gonna lie. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> all the girls, truck drivers, waste management. I love it. <laughs> postal workers. I'm talking about when they mad, though. That postal worker. I'm talking about. All them happy people down at the DMV. What is wrong today? Well, my message today is everybody that work at the DMV that has that attitude. Get your attitude together, man, because God is still good here in the blessing business. You put in the application for that job. That is not our fault. We love you. We need your services today. We want you to have a brighter day today. My wish is that people that work in motor vehicle divisions all over the country have a better day today. Oh, I know we coming in there ignorant. I know we ain't got our paperwork. I know we ain't got our title of registration. I know we done lost our tags. I know all that. But try to treat us better. Just try. <laughs> Let the church say amen. 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 <laughs> Shirley Strawberry Carla Frail, Mouth of the South, Junior Boy, better known as Kill Space, and the legend that is Nephew Tommy. Yeah. Boy? Yeah. What? Junior, yeah. what's happening today? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Uncle. You know, I don't mind taking advice from you, Uncle. You know, you y'all don't mind that. Cause you live the longer, you in a better position. You know, you've done a lot more. So I don't mind Tina, but everybody shouldn't try to give everybody advice. Like my partner called me over to his house the other day, which I thought was his house. 
Mm. I go over there, man. We watching basketball, and he trying to tell me what he expect to tell me about what I need to do with my life and my career. He talking to me, but in the middle of us talking, I hear a voice coming from upstairs as we in the basement. I hear another voice call say, "Charles, come up here and get the groceries out the car." I said, man, who is that? He said, that's my mom. I'm taking no advice from nobody live with their mom. I tell you right now, I'll give a damn what you say. You can't tell me a damn thing. Then we could, he couldn't even get the advice out because she kept calling back down. I said, Char, you been messing with the thermostat? But I said, okay, they exist right here. See, they're right here. That's why I can't take no advice yeah. from you. Ain't a damn thing you can tell me because you sitting up here living at your mama's house in the baby. You told me that was your crib. No, the basement yours. This your mama house. See, that's what I found out. He gonna tell me man, I don't appreciate where they talk, huh? <laughs> See, we couldn't even get the advice in because your yeah. mama on your hand the whole time. Don't tell me what you think I need to do with my life if you're living at your mama's baby. We can't take advice from everybody. It ain't the same come from Uncle Steve and Tommy. It ain't the same come from Shirley. Yeah. It ain't the same come from Carl. See, they don't live with nobody. They got place. They got what it is. You need to start listening to me and what you need to start doing. <laughs> See, what you need to start doing. You start listening to me. He no can't ass. even control his own heat. No, he can't do none of that. Char, huh? You left the toilet seat up again. See, right here, you got other issues. And you try to tell me something. Why your nearest bathroom all the way upstairs? Though? Upstairs. You always got, I'll be back. I can't see. I can't take no advice. I'm not going to. All right. <laughs> Good one, Junior. Coming up in 30 that was minutes. Funny. After the hour, you need. We're gonna run that prank back with the nephew right after this. <laughs> Junior, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Nap? I'm scared. Well, to ask. Shirley, I need a, I, 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 I need a little makeup done. Can you do my makeup? Hello, <laughs> can you do my makeup? Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Hello. Can I speak to uh, to Brandy, please? Yes, this is Brandy. Hi, Brandy. My name is Carl. I'm calling. I got a. Uh, uh, you came highly recommended. You act. You you actually are. I'm, I'm sorry. Is it? Is it? I'm, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Is it makeup artist, makeup stylist? What do you, what do you call it? It's makeup artist. I'm a professional makeup artist. Okay. And you work at the. Um, you work with the makeup counter in. Correct. Okay. Listen, I got a. Uh, I got a photo shoot coming up, and I wanted to see about. Uh, Sometime this week, maybe the following week, you could actually come and and I hire you to uh, actually make me up for my photo shoot. Is, is do you do a lot of photo shoots at all? Or are you? Yes, sir. I sure do. I've been in the business for ten years, so I, I've been around several photo shoots. Okay, good deal. So, what, what's the, what, I mean? You have any time this week that I can actually just come in and we can do like a trial run or something? Yeah, um, I'll actually be here Friday for uh, about six hours. Will Friday work for you? I'm here. I start at eleven. At eleven, I mean, I could come in like maybe like around three on Friday if, if you if, can. You squeeze me in at that time. I sure can. Okay, what's what's a good? Is there a certain makeup for for men? Well, is it kind of works there... out. It works out the same as for women in photo shoots. You just need some type of cream foundation, something to even out the skin tone, uh, powder you down to take away the oils, cover up any blemishes or anything like that. It's pretty much the same. Of course, you don't get the whole eyeshadow and lashes and stuff. But right, 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 makes, right, right. Well, I'm not trying to do all that. But I just trying to, you know, just trying to look good on camera. Uh, yeah. let, let me ask you this: How much makeup have you done as far as um, men? You know what I mean? Yes, several. Okay, so I'm very comfortable with it. You'll be fine, trust me. That's what I was really worried about is if you were going to be comfortable with it, because um, I mean, have you done? Um, I'm a little uh, conscientious about a few things. You know what I mean? And I um, have, have, have you? How many butts have you done? I'm sorry. How many what? Like butts, you know, how many butts have you made up? Uh, I haven't made up any butts. Like, you mean like asses? Yeah, I mean, because see, my, no. I'm actually doing a nude photo shoot. And, uh, you know, I got a couple scratches and, you know, some old scars on my butt. And, I, you know, like, like you said, I'm, you know, I'm a little shy about, you know, some of that. So I was uh, hoping you could no. actually, hopefully you can actually make sure that those scars don't show. And, you know, you said you kind of... Um, you know, uh, make sure everything is, is doesn't look oily. You know what I mean? And and uh, I just need to get my okay. my. No, well, but I I I didn't when you I didn't understand what you're talking about. I may not be the makeup artist. I don't. I'm not seriously. I'm not gonna do your. Okay, but I, I mean, we're just talking about makeup, though. I mean, you know, you you're talking about 
Yeah, but I'm not about to put my makeup brushes that I use on people's faces on your ass. Like, to tell your photographer to, to like, Photoshop that. Okay, like, okay. Who I mean, that's why I'm coming in to see you on Friday. I want you to, to do everything and, and make me up there in the store so I can see what it looks like. I want to see... You were going to come into my job and make me do your ass? Like what are you? What planet are you? Where did you think that was gonna work? You cannot come into my job. How are you gonna come to my job naked? Seriously? Uh, I mean, well, I was gonna wear a robe. I'm not gonna just you know walk no, in there naked. you are naked. not. Don't you even think about coming into my job? Who referred you? Who told you, you need to delete this number? Do not. You're, I'm not about to get this job. Well, I just need to get my done. Okay, I'm, I don't want to go back and forth with you. Look, why, why, is it, why is it a problem now, with you doing my? What, what is the problem with you doing my butt and putting some makeup on it? Now, if I need to buy you some brushes, I'll buy you some brushes, and you can take. I don't want brushes. you to buy me anything. I don't want you coming into my job. I don't want you calling me ever again to do any kind of work. I'm coming you. in there, and I'm. And now, listen. I, I'm I am up. a professional makeup artist. Clearly, you don't know what that means. So you and need if to you're go professional, do then you will take out the part that's bothering you and do the job, lady. You know what I mean? If my has scars on it, I want to clear. It. Up and I'm gonna I have to call on you before I get real ignorant. I'm not about to finish this conversation. Do not come into my job. Do not call me to do your. Ass. That's not gonna happen. So, so, so I guess it's safe to go around and let people know that Brandy is not professional because you can't do parts Look, of the body. My reputation is good in the streets, boo. You can't go around and tell anybody that I'm not professional. Nobody's ever called me to do their. Ass. Get some skincare for your. Ass. How about that? And then you won't need any makeup. I oh, know you didn't. You're not going to sit here and now start talking about my ass. If I told you some of my deepest secrets to let you know I want to come in there and get some makeup. Well, that's your bad for telling a stranger your deepest secrets. Okay. You know what? I'm coming up to your store anyway on Friday. All right? And I'll talk to your boss don't and let, let them know. That don't, you don't let it fool you. Okay? I will be, you heard me. Don't come in my job. Look, if I lose my job over your foolishness, I guarantee you will be paying all my bills. Okay. Bottom line is I'm coming in there with my robe on Friday. Somebody going to do my butt. You, your manager. Sir, you're not coming. You know what? How about you come up here right now? How about I go ahead and take care of the situation right now? I'm here now. Can you come I right can now? come up there right now with my robe. I'm okay. in my robe now. Well, well bring, bring your butt up here right now. We'll see if your butt gets done. I'm not doing it. Okay. Well, the bottom line, who is your manager anyway? Where's she at? Is she there? I am the manager. Now what? Okay, see, that's what the damn problem is. You ain't got your little self a little position at your job. Now you're trying to throw your weight around. If, if a person wants to get their butt done, well, okay, look, did, 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 did you see uh, uh, Avatar? Them people have makeup all on their butt, all on their back and everything. Well, then how about you call them? You call them and ask them to do your butt. Don't call me. I'm hanging up. Do not call me anymore. They are makeup artists. What are you? I, I, the, look, this conversation is over. Yeah, it's over because you know what? You know, you, let me tell you something. You, do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who you're talking to? I know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to Brandy. But do Brandy know who Brandy talking to? Clearly somebody who is ignorant. Okay. Well, let me tell you who I am. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend, Carmen. You are lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting off the phone. I'm getting <laughs> Why y'all do that? that? That is not cool. I hope nobody's listening. You just made me act really stupid. I got you, girl. I got you, you good. You got me good. With the butt? Yeah, for real. Get you some skin care. Get some skin care to take care of the problem. <laughs> hey, Abby, I got one more thing I got to ask you. What is the baddest? And I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. Oh, the damn Steve Harvey morning show. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what? All right, we're just moving on. <laughs> Thank you. Coming up next, we're going to ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey morning show. Coming up at the top of the hour, a friendly reminder that today is April 18th. In other words, tax day, tax day. We'll get some tax tips from Steve, our expert. Thank you very much. <laughs> look at his face. Why are you looking like that? You do know. <laughs> Plus, in sports entertainment news, rapper E-40 was removed from a Sacramento Kings versus Golden State Warriors game. And we'll talk music news about Coachella and Jay-Z in Paris with Carla. And we'll talk about it all at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey. All right, CLO, LaDonna in Gary says, uh, my husband's mother is my bestie, but I had to have words with her because she treats my husband like crap 
all the time. My husband went off on me, and I was only sticking up for him. Should I tell him exactly what his mother said about him? Mm. No. I mean, first of all, how is your mother-in-law your best <laughs> I knew you were going to have an who, issue with that. Who, who made that damn arrangement? <laughs> You're talking about conflict of interest. Right. Why don't your husband be your best friend? Now you got his mama as your best friend. Now... She done told you something about your husband that you don't think she should have said. But y'all mm. besties, though. Mm -hmm. I don't even understand that. You need to pull back on your damn mom-in-law what you need to do. Yeah. Focus on your husband. Quit tripping on your mom-in-law. And here, your mom-in-law, your damn best well, friend. She defending her husband now. Don't forget that part. What? what why? <laughs> But what? She didn't like what his mother said about her son. You her best friend. <laughs> it's confusing. It's crazy. her damn son. Yeah. She right. made him. Well, what? What now? You. This is all wrong. I yeah. don't. Yeah, right. You gonna mess around? You not gonna have no mother-in-law or husband. Or husband. Ooh, this right. <laughs> Keep on. All right, moving on to uh, Jasmine and Laurel. Jasmine writes, my neighbor is cheating on her husband, and they were arguing because she had a close call with her husband and the guy passing each other on the stairs. I heard her tell her husband the guy came from my apartment. Do I tell him the truth? Mm. <laughs> close what? call. Close call. <laughs> a man we pass. Just tried to stare me down. Mm. Mm. You're with us. <laughs> and when I looked at you, uh huh, you looked at the ground. That's exactly mm. what on, happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who he is. Yeah. But I think that you do. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> that garment. <laughs> Who is he and is what he? is a he to you? Sing it. That's my hey, name. that's the jam right yeah, there, boy. <laughs> oh, man, we passed. Yes, yeah, try to stare me down. Uh-oh, boy, that right there. That was a jam right there. Mm -hmm. Well, lady. Jasmine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I forgot the question because the song was so good. I knew good you just did. Right I'm here for you, what baby. Question, I'm here Sharon? for you. She wants to know, should she tell him? Because the neighbor lied and said the man came out of her apartment. But she's like, that's not true. She lied, you know, to cover up her track. So should she tell the woman's husband the truth that the man did not come from her apartment? He that came ain't your from business. your apartment. <laughs> That ain't but they put her in the business because the well, wife said she, he came from her apartment. Right, but that's no harm, no foul. She just used you to get out the mess. <laughs> so now, that's okay. what you finna do is pull her back in the mess. Uh -huh. yeah. See, y'all can't. Her in the mess. Yeah, but see, no. See, listen, it ain't no mess uh -huh. if the man came from her apartment. The but mess is didn't. if it came from the wife's apartment. I know the man didn't, Shirley. That's what the lies <laughs> for. She don't want to be in the mess. The lies. The lies. The lies necessary. If you don't tell this lie, you cannot tell this man that this man came out of his house. Can't. But she doesn't want to be in their mess. I don't, in you the don't lie. Think nobody give a damn about you don't want to be in the lie. <laughs> What? <laughs> Nobody you care about cares about you not wanting to be in the lie. <laughs> you is just a part of it. You're not the actual lie. You ain't the star of the lie. Yeah. 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 You go, the star, star of the lie is the man. I yeah. am the lie of. Yeah. The supporting yeah. cast. That's all you is. You just had a role in it. You was an extra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, extra. Play your you role, you Steve. Ain't, yeah, yeah, you ain't got no speaking lines or nothing. Just shut up. <laughs> that that <laughs> garment. <laughs> you just an extra. Quit trying to have lines. <laughs> Woo. All right, moving on to Angela in Edmonton. Angela writes, uh, I was messing with a co-worker's son, and she found out about us. She told everyone I robbed the cradle, but I'm only six years older than her son. What makes her think I need permission to date him? Should, should we have run it by her or not? 
Mm. Well, no, you shouldn't have run it by. You didn't run it by. Y'all both grown. Yeah. But now she done found out. Now you a cradle rob. Mm. Now you can't, you can't un, you can't shake the title. <laughs> <laughs> cradle robber. Yeah, you the cradle robber. To in her mind, this her baby, and here you come and start sleeping with her baby. That makes you a cradle robber. Now, dude, say he was six years younger than you. It happens all the time. That's common. That ain't even bad. Now, you know the only time that's a problem is if you're nineteen. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Now he twelve. Now we Major got damn problem. problem now. What? Yeah. Now, 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 problem. now we got problem. Yeah. Yeah, but if he's a grown man. You know, okay. then it's okay. And, you know, just once again, what? once again, see, you don't know how to be in the story. The story <laughs> is you the cra- you're a cradle rob. Uh-huh. That's you. you the cradle rob. Just be that. Oh, <laughs> Peter, I don't know how no, people, people know your role. So you Man, em- embrace it up. People don't know how to just take this stuff and go with it. <laughs> Cradle robber, you can't do time for that. Own it. She should own yeah. it. Girl, wear it. <laughs> you have any idea how many public mistakes I done made? I done had to wear it. Just put it on. Girl, you the cradle robber. Start threatening them off. Start threatening Is that the Start name of the movie? <laughs> yeah, Cradle, cradle Robber. Cradle robber. Yeah. Better watch your son. That would need this. Yeah. <laughs> Why you in here emailing? Yeah, all this here. Yeah. All right. All right, last one, Steve. Irma in Macon says, I'm active in my church, but I think I'm going to have to start watching service online. One of my late husband's friends keeps flirting with me, and it makes me sick to my stomach because he and my husband were close. How do I handle this? Hmm. Well. What's the name of this movie? <laughs> the name name of this movie one and done <laughs> one and done you know once, once he died i was done i would just call this one and done i don't really want to see nobody else unless you want to end up where he at because that was seem like that's what everybody i date so man i'm to him so come on all up. right thank you see hello all right yeah. coming up at the top of the hour entertainment news right after this you're listening to the steve harvey morning show Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. The day before Steve licked Ty's high school graduation, two of his best buddies paid him a visit. They told him that the people he thought were his parents were really his grandparents. And his sister was really his mother. How did they know? The whole town knew. Everyone but him. Sasha Rothschild's father was slipping into dementia, and one day he casually mentioned another woman, his wife's best friend. His shocked family discovered he had been living a double life for decades. These are just some of the stories we've told on Family Secrets. Each episode explores a long-held family secret that has finally come to light, usually with powerful consequences. Find out what keeps millions of people tuning in to hear astonishing stories about the secrets that are kept from us, the secrets we keep from others, and yes, even the secrets we keep from ourselves. Listen to Season 8 of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Today is April 18th, otherwise known as Tax Day. Uh, Just a reminder that if your taxes are not completed by today at midnight, you need to file for an automatic extension to October 16th. And remember, an extension of time is not an extension to pay. So to avoid penalties, include a payment. 
Now, if you're waiting for your refund check, refunds are generally issued within 21 days of when you electronically filed your tax return and longer for paper returns. So check the IRS website for more information. And and uh, Steve, since we're on this subject, um, you know, we wanted to all we will always want to ask our experts. So we want to know, do you have any advice? I ain't got but one damn piece of advice for you. Pay <laughs> your damn taxes. Pay your taxes. Send them people they damn money. They not playing with you. This is not a game. This ain't Sears calling you, talking about you late with your payment. This ain't Visa. Uh, this right. ain't MasterCard. This ain't quick cash loan. This ain't even the mortgage company. This is the damn U.S. Treasury Department. Yes. And they ass got pulled. Pay these damn people. You get this extension if you want to, but I just want you to understand something now. That huh. extension gonna come with a penalty. And you yeah. gonna have to pay that too. Pay your damn taxes. That's all I got for you. I have taken the route of I'm not paying y'all. I have done that before. Uh huh. <laughs> and when they say they coming for you, they not playing. <laughs> they comes for your ass, and there's nowhere you can go. Nowhere. Nowhere. You, you can't that. hide. You can't buy nothing. You can't. You can't shift no money. You can't. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Hell no. We froze everything with your name on it, social security number on it. They freeze, and then when you pay them, they don't free unfreeze it the next way. The next day, they make your ass suffer for about six more damn weeks. They teach your ass a lesson about not paying them. Because as soon as you pay the money, I thought they was going to unfreeze my account six uh-huh. more damn weeks. I said, oh, 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 you teaching me a good ass lesson. Uh-huh. I learned it before. Pay these damn people. You call them what you want to come. You call Uncle Sam. You call them crooks. You call them whatever you want to call them. You call them your business partner. You can formulate a relationship with them. You can say y'all friends, y'all co-workers. You call anything you want to. But they ass gets theirs. Okay. And don't try nothing slick. Because all it don't, don't underreport or nothing like that. Because mm-hmm. everybody else that done gave you money done sent your n- name in already. Yep. Uh-huh. And all that's computerized. And they got these systems now where they match everything up. Uh-huh. Oh, it took a long time for me to learn that one, too. But they do that, too. So now don't try nothing tricky with this damn okay. government on today. Because I'm telling you right now, the check I'm writing their ass today is it, it, illegal. It's unlawful. I pay my taxes quarterly. I pay my taxes quarterly. 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 Okay. quarterly. He said quarterly. So quarterly. Yeah, quarterly. <laughs> quarterly. Uh, junior quarterly. what? Quarterly. Yeah, so uh, so what? let me ask you just a bad question. Who you more who you more afraid of? Thugs or or the or the or the IRS? Oh the IRS. I don't give a <laughs> thug. Fuck ass thug. All I got, I got enough money to stay with me. Yo little weak ass. You can't thug me. But the no, IRS. A thug. The IRS. No, let me tell you something. You can talk with a thug. You can reason with a thug. Yeah. You can give a thug a little something, something, and he'll take his broke ass off. Yeah. I've actually negotiated with a thug before. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. With the IRS. Yeah. 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 You give him a little something. You know, reach okay. in the pocket, give him all the money in your uh-huh. pocket, have right. a little right. bit cross your uh, underwear. You ain't got to give him that. Because thugs don't pat you down in the crotch. So whenever yeah. you get a large something, no, this is how you do it when you do it. Take your money, put it in the envelope, and lay it sideways on, in, in your underwear right above your private part. Just lay it sideways oh in your underwear. Thugs don't pat you on your crotch because we gangsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So they don't do that. And you can give them all the other money, and your big money be just laying across your little pouch yeah. there. Yeah. It's yeah. like, but, you know, you know where a fuck. IRS. But the yeah. IRS. But the IRS, I don't give a damn where you put it. <laughs> They're coming for it. They'll pull it out the crack of your butt if they got to. The damn IRS don't give a damn where you got that little envelope here at. They gets they damn money. You can give it to your mama. You can put it in her name. They going to take it from your damn mama, too. I'm telling you, right now, I done tried everything. I put some stuff in my sister's name. They went over there and took it from her ass, too. They, I don't care what you do. Take it. <laughs> Steve Harvey, he approves this mess. I approve going this to the mess. Expert. Uh, expert opinion right there. Be all looking for, for all them. Get all the little, you know, go. If I'm telling you right now, just take it to some prep, take it to some professionals and let them show you how to get all the deductions you can get. Because you do have some deductions.
What about your cousin that, you know, does does taxes on the side sometimes? He gonna have your ass in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Them people that never know what they doing. They never Show know what dumb they dumb ass doing. cousin doing how he do taxes. <laughs> he got a lawnmower service. Right. And he got a tax sign hanging out in front of him. And he sell ribs in the back. Yeah. Give this boy your damn taxes. You'll be in jail with his dumb ass. He ain't filed taxes since 82. 82? <laughs> they don't even know he in the country. <laughs> Any more questions? No, she just asked no. one, though. She just asked no. one. Boy, we got it. <laughs> okay, Steve. Hey, yeah. these damn people. <laughs> Quit playing with them, because they not going to be playing with you. Pay, 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 pay. Get that in your mind. What if you call them? Don't the pick up that phone. Don't you do that? Don't you call them? <laughs> you gotta get you some legal ass advice. Don't you pick up that phone and call them people? They gonna manhandle your ass. Don't ever call the IRS without a lawyer on that phone with you or a tax consultant. Don't yeah. you stupid ass talking to them. Folks. <laughs> Don't All ever right. call them. <laughs> Alright, coming up in 20 minutes uh, after the hour. <laughs> We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, the Sacramento Kings say they are investigating why hip-hop star E-40 was kicked out of the Kings versus Warriors playoff game this past Saturday in Sacramento. E-40 said he was, quote, subjected to disrespectful heckling and in the fourth quarter turned around and addressed one heckler in an assertive but polite manner. E-40 went on to say, that's when King security approached me, assumed I instigated the encounter, and proceeded to kick me out of the arena. Despite my success, racial bias remains prevalent. Security saw a disagreement between a black man and a white woman, and immediately assumed that I was at fault. Wow. Absolutely. I, listen to me. I saw the whole thing. I'm very familiar with the incident. Mm -hmm. I've talked mm -hmm. to a couple of key people in it. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the Warriors were fully supporting E for the e, e, e Diguala. What's his name? Oh, Andre Iguodala. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He walked E forty out. E forty was there the whole game. Mm -hmm. White lady behind him heckling this man the entire game. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about riding him and got her camera up the whole time, just heckling this brother, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the brother turned around and finally said something to her. That was it. Here comes security down front. Uh -huh. Grab him. And they started to hold back. Now, E-40 put his hand on the man's shoulder, leaned in and said, hey, man, this woman been heckling me the whole time. I don't care a damn about that. You got to get out of here. Wait a minute. So then they grabbed E-40. So E-40 snatched. Wait a minute. Hold on, man. E-40 is on the front row of all the games. Yes, he is. He all the Warrior supporter. games. He he That's right. Side. He's a uh -huh. super fan. He was yes, down he there supporting the Warriors in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. This woman, the entire time the security was talking to him, she filming the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Just wow. back there with her husband. I'm going, so they don't even say nothing to her. Right. But she dogged this brother out the whole game. Finally, he just Karen, got tired and turned Karen. around and said mm -hmm. something to her. And then the Warriors players came over there. Because they, they had a problem with that. Because they yeah. like, oh, man. That's this dude, dude was very polite. E no, this he dude, polite. he don't even move like that, man. Yeah, uh -huh. E-40, this dude is oh, the real deal now. Mm -hmm. You ain't yeah. never heard about E-40 bothering and he don't nobody move like that. ever. Anything. <laughs> that ain't how he roll. Mm -hmm. Ever. Mm -hmm. exactly. This dude is smooth now. Now, you don't He's want alleged. none. Yeah. Don't, right. you, don't, you do not want none. Right. So the white lady got to stay at the game? Dog, they don't put nothing. Her. Ain't said nothing to her. Wow. But she down here harassing wow. this other man. He ain't on the team. See, what you don't have the right to do is harass another fan. Right. right. It's already, now you can boo and heckle the players. You bought your ticket to all this. But you messing with this fan on the front row. This man ain't, and she just dogging him, man. You should have seen, yeah, man, saw, look at the video. It's a video. horrible. And yes, I saw horrible. him leaving out, and then other fans, all these white people at the game, they waving by. They have no mm -hmm. idea who he is. You all right. Him? Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll check Steve's voicemail, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
It is time now to check Steve's voicemail. And if you like to leave Steve a message, uh, call him, 877-29-STEVE. You might just hear your call in the air. All right, Steve, you ready? Here we go. Landon from New Orleans left you a message. Here it is. Hey, Steve, what's happening? This is Landon, man. I'm from New Orleans. Oh, I'm trying to find out, man. Man, ever since I've been putting that baby all on, man, my girl been going crazy. So I'm trying to find out what's the secret, what, what ingredients they got in the baby barrel that attracts the woman. Be blessed. I'm like, in the what oil? In the, in the what oil? Baby oil? Baby oil. Baby oil. Yes. Oh, baby oil. Oh, oh, hey, 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 man. The secret Landon. ingredient in there, what, what, what's his name? Landon. Landon. He's from New Orleans. Landon. Landon. <laughs> the secret ingredient of the baby oil is the oil. <laughs> It's just the oil, though. The that smooth, silky ass oil. And, and, and don't be getting them substitutes. Get that Johnson Johnson big oil. That smooth, creamy hey, texture. Brand. It's, it's wet. It's always warm. It's, it's the right temperature. It's just what it is. It makes everything is slippery. Uh, One of the key okay. components is it's slippery. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Slippery is good. It's just, boy. Yeah. Man, thank you for calling. Lady. That's it. <laughs> just, what, is, what is the secret ingredient? Oil. <laughs> Not baby. Yeah, man, it makes oil. you go crazy. You can call it all for the baby. <laughs> oil. Yeah. All right. Moving on to okay, oh, Jay. Uh, KJ, the mailman, has a comment for you, Junior. Hey, what's up, morning, family? This is KJ, the mailman. Listen, Junior made a comment about the three hardest words in marriage the other day. The hardest words in marriage are, we need to talk. Everybody have a wonderful day. <laughs> you agree, Steve? Yeah. 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 Junior? They, they, well, Junior yeah. said the hardest three words. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what was your three words, where, Junior? Where where have no. you been? Yeah, where have you been? No. Uh-huh. And, and then Mine was where the blank you been. Yeah, that's yeah. what Tommy threw in the blanket. Yeah. Yeah, where you been? Yeah. And no, and then what did I tell you the hardest three words were? Where you? See? Wait, no, no, no. No, see, no, no, that's see, right. You see, right, Get it right. Yeah, you right. Get it right. Because uh, I, I said, have a phenomenal yeah, memory for you. You do. Uh, you right. So, so that was your word. But my word was, where you going? Where yeah. you going? Yeah, that's it's, where the, I it's the hardest yeah. three words. I thought that was hard. Yeah, the hardest three words is where you been. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, that's okay. true. Okay, right. we gotta where get it been. right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now he right. say it was, can we talk? We yeah. need to talk. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need to talk. We need. That's four words. It's why we didn't. <laughs> do that. All of it's hard. <laughs> Every word out your wife's mouth has potential danger written on it. You ain't lying. Yeah, man. Every you word. It could be, hey, can I ask you something? Oh. That's dangerous. God, <laughs> so what's Baby, guess what? Guess what I found? What? <laughs> guess, mm-hmm. guess what I found? I, it could mm. be anything. Hey, did you see this? Mm. You scared mm. of any conversation? Hold on, hold on. Here I'm we go. Right. Steve, Steve, what is this? Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard. So where exactly did you and Walter go last night? Ooh, God. Ah. Mm. Not yeah. your God. exact That's location. <laughs> your exact <laughs> location. Woo! And, and so why does that frighten you? Any kind of question because you don't know how to answer it or you got to figure out how to answer it. The truth no, you gotta just lie. doesn't come naturally, huh? You got to lie. Oh, I'm Because oh, it I'm, wouldn't be that scary if you would just tell the truth. No, 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 Surely no. Surely no, no, facts. No. See, what's I'm telling the what, truth what, is scary. Yeah, see, y'all stupid, see. That's what? where you're going to have a problem. What'd you say, Steve? If you keep telling the truth, your ass going to have a problem in your marriage. Yeah. In your marriage, if you keep your do you hear this every thing? marriage needs some lying in it. Yeah, color. and every y'all women are lying. good at it, and you know it. What? Y'all don't ever know how much nothing costs. Y'all be hiding clothes and stuff. You be going places, don't be saying nothing. You have conversations you don't want us to hear. No, y'all the same way. So guys- don't, don't just dump it all on us. Oh, well, it's all dumped on you. All right. Coming what up else? next. <laughs> Coming up next. It is the nephew and the prank phone call for today, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, I love him, but dot, dot, dot. We'll get into that. Find out what that's all about. Mm-hmm. I love him, but. Mm-hmm. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, nap today? Ah, uh, Shirley, you know, you wake up some mornings and you just don't know how stupid you want to be. You know you're going to be stupid, what? but you don't know the level of where you're going to take it. So, um... You know, I've been pondering my stupidity this morning and trying to figure what level wow. of it I want to do. Huh? Uh, and I, I think I landed here. Uh, level, so I don't know what we keep talking about all these level changes for. Huh? I, have stupidity, I have stupidity. I have stupidity levels, huh? No, no. You're uh, extremely stupid. Yes. All the time. Yes. So just yes. Go, you yes. can't soften it. Come on. Okay. All right. <laughs> Y'all going to put some spec on my stupid. Adoption agency. Adoption agency. He's irritated. Okay. Put some spec on my stupid. Let's go, Kevin. Trying to reach Clarence? Uh, yeah, this is he. Clarence, how you doing, man? This is Robert. Robert. Uh, we were trying to get a schedule with you guys. Maybe we can swing through and uh, pick up little Clarence. I guess around six, if you guys are available around six. Uh, okay. What do you mean picking up little Clarence? Well, we got the um, we got the call that we can come and actually pick up Clarence and 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 take him with us. Have you guys packed his things up yet? Whoa, 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 wait, man. Got the call from who that you can come pick him up? I don't know nothing about this. Well, my name is Robert, Robert, and my wife and I got the call that we could. Do you not know about us uh, um, uh, uh, adopting little Clarence? Oh, what the who? adopting who? Oh, okay, wait a minute. Are, are you guys at? Are you guys at uh, drive? Uh, yeah, that's that's my address. But uh, well, and, and, what you talking about? You gonna come take my son from me? Yeah. Okay, but you, you, your your son is two years old, right? Yeah, he's two. What they got okay, to do with you coming to pick up my son? And what is this agency's number? Uh, well, the, the agency told us that what well, adoption agency? They've got all our information. We've we've filled out all the paperwork, and you you guys aren't aware that that we're supposed to come there today to pick him up? Hell no! What what adoption agency said this was? How to get my information? I'm not sure. We we've got uh, pictures of Clarence, and oh. and oh, yeah. uh, you know, my wife is actually going out and bought balloons and everything, and 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 we were gonna come through. They told us any time today, so we felt maybe like around 6 p.m. we'd come get him. Well, now you ain't coming here to pick up no clearance. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, okay, wait, wait a minute now. Uh, this, 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 I mean, this can't be happening. Uh, I, I, okay, wait a minute. Uh, oh, what's happening? You're, 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 you're Clarence Sr., correct? Yes, I am. And you don't know anything about us to come over there to pick the baby up? Hell no, I don't know nothing about this. See, what's the name of this place again? Uh, Adoption agents. Who gave you my information and how they get my information to come pick up my son? I, I don't know that, sir. All I know is is uh, we've bought a car seat. We're, we're, you know, my wife has bought balloons. Man, I don't care. Y'all bought a car seat, balloons, high chair, whatever. You ain't coming to get my son. Okay, sir. I'm, I mean, what, what I'm not going to do is, is, is tell my wife that we're not coming to get Clarence Jr. today. Oh, yeah, y'all, you're going to have to tell her that because you ain't coming here to pick up my son. Sir. From with the paperwork that I have, Clarence is actually my son now. Man, f- you and your paperwork. You ain't coming here to pick up my son. Sir, Clarence Jr. is mine. I'm actually going to change his name to Robert. So, I, yeah, I mean, like, I, like, like here you are. Come on over here if you want to. Come on over here. I'm waiting for you. I'm standing in the driveway right now. Okay, well, wait a minute. Now, the, the, the adoption agency tells us that you guys are not doing well finance, uh, financial. Are you working? No, I ain't working. What the f- they got to do with anything? I ain't gonna get rid of my son just because I ain't working. Okay, but 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 uh, uh, so in other words, you're not you're not able to to provide for him, from what I understand. Man, my son ain't missed no meal. He got clothes on his back. He got a roof over his head. Man, I'm not. You ain't coming here to pick up my son. I don't care what I got to do, man. I go out cut grasses. I make money on the side, washing cars and everything. Okay, you okay, but come here and get my son. But don't you think he deserves a better home? I don't know what the what the screw up is. I don't know, but I'm trying to at least rationalize with you yeah. so you can understand why me well, and my I'm wife. I'm rationalizing with you. You ain't coming to get my son. He in a good home right now. I love my son. You ain't taking him nowhere. I'm telling you, I'm right here in the driveway. Come on over here. Sir, I don't want to go back and forth, but I am. Me and my wife are coming to get Clarence today. Uh, okay, come on. Come on. I'm waiting for you. I'm already told you about two, three times. Come on, I'll be waiting right here. I guarantee you. Sir, sir I don't want any altercations when I get there. I just want Clarence to get in the car, and me and my wife are going to take him to his new home. You, when you get here, it's going to be one hell of an altercation, so you might want to come to law, whoever's going to come with you. Bring the adoption agent, too, so I can whoop that too.
You know what, man? If you was to be able to provide for your family, wouldn't nobody be trying to adopt your child? The problem is that you can't take care of your family. Now, me and my wife coming over there, and we coming to get Clarence Jr. That's oh, the you ain't coming down here to get my child. Man, you get down here, I'm going to you and your wife up. How about that? Hold on, wait a minute. Wait, what you going to do? What to my wife? Well, I don't hear women, but I'm going to tell you right now. You and your wife going to come down here. I'm going to help both of you. Anybody come down here try to take my child up out of my house, they going to get up. I'm coming to get it. Man. I got to do what I got Man, to do. I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't coming down here to get my son. You, your wife, I'm telling you, nobody's going to come here and take I'm my not son. I'm not going to My wife, you got my number. I don't know how you got my address. I don't care what the agency you got going through or whatever going on. But I'm telling you right now, you come down here, I'm going to all y'all up. I'm not going to disappoint my wife. Now, she think we coming to get this. I don't give a who disappoint whoever you want at this point. I don't give a about that right now. But you ain't about to take my son about I'm going to come and get him out that house. I done told my wife I was coming to man, get him. Man, I'm telling man, you better tell your wife. You come in this driveway, I'm going to be sitting right here waiting for you, and I'm going to the last one of y'all up. Every last one of y'all. I don't care who you bring. You can bring President Obama, and I'm going to you. you ain't finna do now. You ain't finna do. You ain't finna. Try to take my son out of your house. I'm gonna tell you right now. Everybody getting fucked up. All I'm finna do is let you know this. I'm coming to get Clarence Jr. Well, you, you, ain't, you ain't got nothing to tell me or let me know. I'm letting you know right now. You better come here with the corner and everybody because I'm about to you up. You gonna leave here with a and you come on here and take my son. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You get his clothes what together so he can come and live me. a better life. He's not living a good life there. You get his clothes. Man, I told you about six, seven, eight times. Bring your mother down here and I'm you and everybody, whoever you bring down here, up, you try to take my you, you You know who else I'm bringing with me? Because I'm bringing somebody well, else with well, me. You, you better bring an army. Say what? It better be a army to come down here and get my son about this house. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm bringing nephew Tommy with me. You ain't home? I'm, I'm, bring, <laughs> I'm bringing nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show with me. <laughs> oh, man. You said Clarence, this is Tommy, man. This is nephew Tommy. Man, woo! Ooh, man, I'm about to up everybody out here. Man, come down here taking my shit. Your show. brother named Benjamin got me to get you, dog. Oh, man. See, that's how family gets up. See, next time I see him, it's on. <laughs> Man, that, that was a good one, man. Oh, that man. All right, Pauls. Tell me one more thing, man. What's the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at it any way you want to. That right there was straight stupid. You can look at it any way you want to look at it. Straight stupid. And stupid is coming to Philadelphia. Nephew Tommy and friends laugh out loud comedy show. Two Ray in the building. Craig McLaren in the building. And Lou Nail in the building. Aww. We gonna be doing it at the Keswick, baby. April the 29th. Tickets on sale right now. Sound like Philly to me. What you got, Shirley? Yeah. Okay, nephew, here's a voicemail from you. This is from Angie from Kentucky. Oh. Hello, Steve and family. My name is Angie. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. And I just came back from Bowling Green from seeing nephew Tommy. Nephew, you are ignorant. You had me and my family in stitches. We was laughing so hard. I just want you to know you are awesome. We love you and keep up the good work. Come to Louisville. Come to Louisville. We had to drive two hours to Bowling Green, but we came. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Angie, that was sweet. <laughs> that was nice. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, baby. I acted a stone fool. Headlining fool. I was headlining fool at that night. <laughs> All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject, I love him, but dot, dot, dot. We'll find out, see what that's all about right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. 
I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. The day before Steve Lick ties high school graduation, two of his best buddies paid him a visit. They told him that the people he thought were his parents were really his grandparents. And his sister was really his mother. How did they know? The whole town knew. Everyone but him. Sasha Rothschild's father was slipping into dementia, and one day he casually mentioned another woman, his wife's best friend. His shocked family discovered he had been living a double life for decades. These are just some of the stories we've told on Family Secrets. Each episode explores a long-held family secret that has finally come to light, usually with powerful consequences. Find out what keeps millions of people tuning in to hear astonishing stories about the secrets that are kept from us, the secrets we keep from others, and yes, even the secrets we keep from ourselves. Listen to Season 8 of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We've partnered with Olay Body Lotion this spring for the chance to win $1,000. Olay Hyaluronic Body Lotion nourishes skin with all-day hydration. So transform your skin this spring with Olay Body Lotion. 95% of women had visibly smoother skin in just seven days when used two times a day. Also try Olay Hyaluronic Body Wash. To enter and get rules, visit steveharveyfm.com and you might transform Transform your spring with one thousand dollars. Did you hear me? I said one thousand dollars. Sounds nice. like a good deal to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is time now for today's strawberry letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click submit strawberry letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now today you never know it could be yours it could be yours buckle up and hold on tight we got it for you here it is strawberry letter subject i love him but dot 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 dear stephen shirley i'm a 30 year old professional woman dating a man that just got a divorce i met him while he was still married but we didn't go out until he moved out of his home he was still married but legally separated on our first date his wife followed him and she made a big scene in public calling me all kinds of names he cursed her out so badly that i was ashamed for her and scared of him i knew in the back of my mind that she would be a problem and he might one day curse me out like that if he got mad enough at me but I kept on dating him when he got a divorce he opened up about how he cheated on his wife twice and she caught him both times he told me that he'd gotten that out of his system and since he has a good woman in in parentheses me he didn't have a reason to cheat he's a great lover and provider and he's cultured He asked me to marry him on a Sunday in front of my mother, and I said yes. By that Wednesday, I found out he might have another woman that he was sleeping with, and she said he told her he wants a future with her. I told her that I'm engaged to him, and she was surprised. I called him at work, and he said he wanted to talk face to face. So he picked me up from work and we drove an hour to the lake and he had some snacks and wine in the car. He told me that the lady was lying and he thought I was smarter than that. We made love on a blanket by the lake and my heart said that this was my husband. It was the most romantic day ever. My heart flutters around him, but I don't think I know him well enough to marry him. Our our wedding is in June and I love him, but dot 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 I need more time are most people uncertain before the wedding well a lot are I won't say most but a lot of people are yeah uncertain before the wedding but um you should be pretty certain though uh haven't you heard the saying when people show you who they are believe them I mean this man has shown you what he's capable of you even said you were afraid of him after he cursed his wife out like that but 
You still didn't break it off with him. You said he's a good lover. No, you said he was a great lover and provider. Um, you know, those are wonderful qualities in a man to be a great lover, great provider, all of that. But did you forget? Uh, did, did you forget that he cheated on his wife twice? And that's why they're getting a divorce. Okay. So whatever you do, you got to get. Uh, get to know this man. You got to continue that. You may find other out other things that he does. Um, the real him is going to eventually show up. I mean, you know, I get the, the, the lake and sex by the lake and the fruit and the wine and the snacks and all of that. But you got to listen to your gut. Uh, you obviously can't forget how he acted when he was angry at his first wife and you're wondering if one day maybe he could do that to you. Well, he certainly has the capacity for it now, doesn't he? So I suggest to you guys, go to marriage counseling before getting married. Even, you know, if you even are con still considering taking that step, you, you, you guys need some kind of understanding, some kind of guidance. Marriage is one of the biggest things you can do in life. So you need to do whatever you can to protect yourself. Tell him you want to go to marriage counseling first and see how that goes. Steve? You know what? I happen to agree with everything Shirley said. I do. Uh, lady, I just want to add this one thing. I love him, but, okay. <laughs> well, you know, my father used to tell me all the time, if when you say but, it negates everything you said in front of that. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking to me and you say but, boy, just know that whatever you said before don't even apply no more. And And that's the case right here. But this is a case of intuition. And God gives intuition to women to protect you from the hunter, which is us. See, we have hunting skills. You have intuition, which that which is your safeguard against us. But y'all keep ignoring the intuition because you want to believe your heart instead of your mind. And that's where the problem starts. You're a 30-year-old professional. you dating a man that just got a divorce. He was still married when you met. Y'all ain't go out till he moved out of his house. He was still married but legally separated. On your first date, his wife followed him, and she made a huge scene in public, called you all kind of name. He cussed out so bad you felt bad for her, and you were scared of him. And then you knew in the back of your mind, see, here we go, the mind now, the mind. The mind is where the intuition resides. Heart is, it gets you in trouble. Your mind is where the, I knew in the back of my mind, she would be a problem, and he might one day cuss, cuss me out like that if he got mad enough at me. When we come back, that has set the tone for the rest of my answer. All right, all right, Steve. understand what I mean. All right, we'll have part ahead. two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, I love him, but dot, dot, dot. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, I love him, but dot, 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 dot. Well, here we go. Perfect case of a woman following her heart and ignoring her intuition. Your intuition is in your mind. Your heart is filled with nothing but emotions. Your heart hurts. Your heart bleeds. Your heart loves. Your heart breaks. All that. Your mind just thinks. And that's where your intuition is. Stop ignoring it, ladies. Your 30 year old woman. Dating a man got a divorce. You met him while he was married, but you all didn't go out until he moved out the house. He was still married, but legally separated. Y'all went out on your first date. His wife followed y'all, made a huge scene, called him all kinds of names. He cussed her out. He cussed her out so bad, you was ashamed for her, but you were scared of him. Then here we go. I knew in the back of my mind that she would be a problem, and he might one day cuss me out like that if he got mad enough at me. Now, you knew this in the back of your mind. That's where your intuition resides. But I kept on dating him. When he got a divorce, he opened up about how he had cheated on his wife twice, and she caught him both times. Damn, this dude, this dude can't cheat. <laughs> stupid. He cheated on his wife twice. She caught him both times. Y'all went on one date. She caught y'all ass then. <laughs> this dude's track record for getting caught. 
He, you dating somebody real stupid now. Mm-hmm. I just want you to know that. You know, he told me that he got that out of his system since he has a good woman, and he didn't have a reason to treat cheat. Now nah, here you go. He's a good lover and provider, and he's cultured, but he's stupid though. <laughs> She See, that's that the part you're leaving out. He's a great lover, provider, he's cultured, and he's stupid. He asked me to marry him on Sunday in front of my mama, and I said yes. Now, this Sunday now. Mm-hmm. By that Wednesday, three damn days, I found out he might have another woman that he was sleeping with, and she said... He told her that he wants a future with her. Wait a minute. His wife busted him twice. Y'all went on one date. He busted. She busted y'all. He asked you to marry him on Sunday. On Wednesday, you done busted his ass again. <laughs> How dumb is this man right here? You dating somebody that's stupid, man. <laughs> he can't cover tracks. He he might be a good provider. And he might be a good lover, but he's not a good protector. See, he don't know how to protect a woman's feelings. He not going to guard your heart because he reckless. He's stupid. She said he told her he wants a future with her. I told her I'm engaged to him. She was surprised. Really? When, when, y'all engaged? I called him at work, and he said he wanted to talk face to face. See that see that face to face that gave him time to get himself together. So he picked you up from work and we drove an hour to a lake and he had some snacks and wine in the car. Well, ain't that a good thing? Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go fix her. All oh, this busting me. I'm gonna get me some crackers and some wine. I'm gonna get some cheese. Cheese blocks, cut them up. I'm gonna get me a damn blanket. I'm gonna go talk to her down here by this damn lake. Yeah, good thing he bought them snacks. He told me that the lady was lying and he thought I was smarter than that. Wait a minute. If the lady lying, how did you find the lady? What? You you just, you mean to tell me that you pulled a woman's name out of thin air and called her and she just happened to know who he was? Mm. No. He told you the lady was lying and he thought I was smarter than that. You are smarter. You found out Wednesday, right after he asked you to marry him, Sunday. We made love on a blanket by the lake. And my heart Ooh. said, this is my hook. Here go, you go, here you go again. Mess around with your heart. Here your heart go. Ladies, here you go. Heart told me this was my husband. Your brain just had you call a woman out of no damn way. Bingo, she was having a future with the dude, too. So now it's really three chicks that his wife, he was cheating on. You busted him with one, and the wife then busted him with the two he cheated on, and y'all on your first date. Now, dumbass is back at it again. Mm -hmm. Getting busted. We made love on the blanket by the lake, and my heart said, this is my husband. It was the most romantic day ever. You need to have some more damn days then. <laughs> How is this the most romantic day ever? On the day that you found out he was sleeping with somebody else. This the most romantic day. You need to hear him have some more damn days. <laughs> Our wedding is in June. My heart flutters around him, but I don't know him well enough to marry him. Our wedding is in June, and I love him, but I need more time. Why don't you take more time? Ain't nothing to say you got to get married in June. Call it off so you can find out what you really got, and you might find out a whole lot more. Are most people uncertain before the wedding? What is you worrying about most people for? <laughs> you wrote the damn letter. You are on, you are concerned, and you need to be, and you need to call this wedding off and get yourself together until you know this man better. Mm-mm. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter. Thank you, Steve. It's Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, it's Junior with Sports Talk. And we'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, let's go. Yeah, you know what, Shirley? It's so many games. I ain't get to all of them yesterday. But it's just this NBA playoff is so many. The scheduling, I mean, is it on TNT, ESPN, CBA, ABC? It's just a lot y'all asking me to do right now. But the Laker game, God, dog, the Lakers won, okay? I, I know I heard y'all. I ain't covered the Lakers. I'm covering it now. The Lakers won 128 to 112 over the Grizzlies. Okay, now John Morant got injured, injured his hand six minutes left in the fourth quarter. I don't know if he gonna play on, in game two. It's just we don't know if he, he out better. for the series. He, he, he needs in to. Game two. He ain't gonna they ain't game winning two game up. two then. They ain't winning. Man. It's, gonna, it's gonna be too old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's another shocker, man. The heat over the Bucks, man. That, that Jimmy Butler, man, wow. just give him his credit. No. Jimmy Butler, he played grown man basketball. He body you up. He lean into you on all his layup. He trying to get two and one, and yeah. Giannis got hurt too. Yeah, Giannis Ooh. got hurt in the beginning of the game. You know, uh, lower back injury after he went to the hole. We don't know. He coming back. I told y'all. they ain't going to win. Dude. Tyler then Hero broke win. his hands. <laughs> They ain't going to win if he'll come back. <laughs> then they ain't going to win. Then. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Tyler Hero broke his hand, uh, um, you know, sliding for the ball. All right, here we go. Look, the Clippers and the Sun, which was a great game, too. That was a great game. You got to get Clippers and the Sun was a great game. Junior, take yeah. your hand off your head. Man, man it's a lot of stress. Sports, sports, is this too much for you? <laughs> man, you see how many games this is? It's Damn, a lot of games. chaos. Ain't no lot of yeah. games with four. Well, no, no. He said but you guys go from Saturday all the way to Sunday. What was you doing? <laughs> watching the game. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah, okay. The clip this was can't in be the too sun. much for you. It's four damn games. Not, he's not going to have missed it. <laughs> Clippers hey, man, do you want us to give you another sun. segment, man? <laughs> no, man. It's just Clippers and Sun. 115, 110. Man, it was a good game. Got, yeah. Look, didn't nobody so stand for us. Yeah, the Suns lost. Tommy, man, Kawhi Leonard. But you know what, win, though? Man. Let's give him his credit, too, huh? <laughs> Let's give him his credit. Westbrook. Let's just go and give Westbrook his credit, man. He, yeah, he had a terrible shoot game, but his hustle was undeniable. I'm mm -hmm. talking undeniable hustle can affect the game. I'm talking blocks, steals, assists. You ain't got to score Westbrook. They gonna talk about you, but his hustle was undeniable. I gotta give him that. I, I can't I can't take that. He got the from. best motor in basketball. Man, didn't stop the whole time. And nobody stayed up. Like I said, nobody nobody stayed up for the Nuggets and the Timberwolves. Okay? That's just beyond. I did. You went to sleep. Yeah, I went to sleep. It was too much. I, didn't lay down. I said, I'm on the West Coast. I was wide awake. You wide awake. Yeah. <laughs> did not Steve give a scared. damn about the game, though. <laughs> Steve is scared. That's you must go into crisis mode. I'll be back Junior. tomorrow. Man, I'm sitting up here. This way Good too much Lord. again. Tommy, you're going to have to take over sports or something. Thank if I miss you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hell, we're going to let Mississippi Monica do the damn sports tomorrow. <laughs> Leave Junior alone. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is... He's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. The day before Steve licked high high school graduation, two of his best buddies paid him a visit. They told him that the people he thought were his parents were really his grandparents. And his sister was really his mother. How did they know? The whole town knew. Everyone but him. Sasha Rothschild's father was slipping into dementia, and one day he casually mentioned another woman, his wife's best friend. His shocked family discovered he had been living a double life for decades. These are just some of the stories we've told on Family Secrets. Each episode explores a long-held family secret 
that has finally come to light, usually with powerful consequences. Find out what keeps millions of people tuning in to hear astonishing stories about the secrets that are kept from us, the secrets we keep from others, and yes, even the secrets we keep from ourselves. Listen to Season 8 of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, this is just such a horrible, horrible story out of Kansas City, Missouri. 16-year-old Ralph Yarl is recovering from severe gunshot injuries to the head after a man allegedly shot him twice. According to his aunt, around 10 p.m. last Thursday evening, Yarl was headed to pick up his siblings and arrived at the wrong address. Now, the 16-year-old went to 115th Street instead of 115 Terrace. The correct address address Yarl was attempting to go to was just a block away. The homeowner opened his front door and then fired at Yarl. The man took a second shot at Yarl, hitting him again. Yarl was able to get up and run for help. He attempted wow. to ask for help from three neighboring residential homes until someone was able to get help for him. Can you imagine? Oh my so he just opens the door, he don't say nothing, there's right, no conversation. Just, fires out. You just fire. fire it off? Mm-hmm. Yes. You already got a gun at your door? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just fires that's, up. This is America. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, is where we live. See, this ain't no stand your ground, though. I ain't got no but gun. That's but that's saying. what they're trying to no. Yeah, that's what no, they're trying to say. No, it's not stand your ground. Mm-hmm. Because this young man wasn't coming. There. He didn't come there with a gun. Yeah. He didn't come there and ride. He rang or knocked on the door. Yeah, but that's what the authorities are, are trying to see now if uh, the suspect, the shooter, was protected within the standard ground law. So that's what they're investigating right no, now. No, no. Yeah. See, you can't you can't claim that um, he wasn't breaking in. No, no, nothing. Yeah, the homeowner was that suspected of the shooting was brought to the police station. He made a statement. They released him shortly uh, afterwards. Released. And um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, this is terrible. This young man, Ralph Yarl, 16 years old, a member of the Technology Student Association, Science Olympia team. He's a section leader in the marching band and a member of the Missouri Scholar Academy. So, I mean, just just a great young man. This 16 years old just went to pick up his his. Uh, his uh, it's because it's a black dude yeah. knocking at your door at night. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. You open the door and shoot him. Yeah, mm-hmm. twice, yeah. twice. They are at. They were at the uh, homeowner's home protesting. So Andrew Lester, he is the suspect. He is an 85 year old white man. He was charged with one count felony assault in the first degree and one count of armed criminal action which is also a felony so we'll keep an eye out on this story that is good news kansas city the police department the mayor the police chief they got to do an investigation yeah this was yeah. a good kid he made a yeah, mistake a really good kid what's the threat you open the door it's a Some kid mistake. standing there he's got nothing in his hand and you just fire off man mm-hmm. yeah uh, or talk to him away. through the door if you don't mm-hmm. even know yeah. him. I'm here to pick up my little, I think it's what? twin brothers. I think yeah. he had twin brother siblings. Yeah. Siblings that he's picking up. Who are you picking up? Such and yeah. such, such and such. They're not here. You have the, you wrong, got the wrong address. What's, what's right. wrong with talking? What's wrong yeah. with this country? Everybody shoot and ask questions later. You can't resolve conflict. You can't have a conversation with somebody. You got to no, shoot them? No, no. And shoot. why are you opening your door for someone you don't even know anyway? Why are you doing To it? shoot them. Yes, yeah, that's shoot, obviously. You obviously. to do that. Obviously. Here is one of the major problems with carrying a gun. It serves no purpose unless you use, you use it for a lot it. of yes. people. Yes. True that. And a lot of people, if I'm going to the door with my gun, mm-hmm. I'm going to the door with my gun, and this only becomes useful if I use it. Yeah. It don't, it's just yeah. idiotic, man. Yeah. Yes. Right. Such a horrible story. Again, That like boy said, probably see. offered no threat at all. He had no mm-hmm. reason to shoot him. No. Yeah. No. And, and, just, and as a listener, there black. if you he's standing if you, there black, that's what the yeah, problem. That's yeah, what it was, problem. Tommy. And as a listener, if you want to help out, go to Attorney Benjamin Crump. He has information as what listeners can do to help to email the prosecutor. So go to his uh, Instagram okay. page mm-hmm. and get that info. Yeah. 
Sorry. Yeah, this is awful. But we're yeah. still not doing anything about any kind of gun control in this country. Oh, no. no. Yeah, and we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here's some weird news. Uh, police in Philadelphia say someone used bolt cutters to break into a parked truck, which was loaded with bags of dimes. Whoever did it made off with approximately one million dimes, or if you count it out, it's $100,000. Uh, police, I didn't even know that. One million dimes equals $100,000. I ain't never counted that many dimes. <laughs> Ever. I don't even know how to count to a million like that. A lot of damn dimes, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your pants going to be sagging on purpose. <laughs> so police police found loose coins on the street leading to a nearby road, presumably from the bags being dragged to a getaway car. The truck driver had picked up about $750,000 in dimes from the Philadelphia Mint and then drove to the neighborhood where he lives. He left the truck parked overnight in a Walmart parking lot while he went home to get some sleep to prepare for the next leg of his trip to Florida. Believe it or not, police say this is actually not an unusual practice for truck drivers, and this is an investigation that's ongoing. So, <laughs> I'm not leaving that we in learned? the truck. I'm not what? Nah. You what, Steve? I'm not leaving that in the truck at the Walmart parking lot. I'm staying with the dimes. <laughs> <laughs> he left. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be some stand your ground going on out here, of course. What about these dimes? I can't let these dimes get up out of here. Lisa, what, Lisa, what a million pennies. That wouldn't have been worth it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, guys, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather marry someone billionaire rich status okay who cheats on you or would you rather marry someone with no money who is faithful oh no i want that cheater all them billions, <laughs> I'm, yeah. uh, i get over hey. all that you you hey. do this you can cheat in front of my face yeah. and i don't care. don't care don't care hey matthew how you doing <laughs> <laughs> that's who she Come on is in, in in hey 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 let me get on out of here <laughs> you know, you know, that y'all have your space. <laughs> what you yeah, say, Steve? F- Three's a crowd. I'm going to fly on down to Miami. How long are you going to be here, though? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be at the club if you're looking for me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> about that. that's, a, that's so sad. <laughs> what? I'm what? I'm with the get guys, my, though, I'm now. My ass, I, I am, like. too. That's what's sad. Yeah. What's going on out here? All right, let's keep with the billionaire theme for a second. Or, um, would you rather live the rest of your life financially comfortable? The rest of your life, you're just comfortable financially, okay? Or would you rather live the next 20 years like a billionaire, but then be poor after that? Oh, be Twenty for sure. A, a, a good twenty, yeah. Good strong twenty. Well, twenty is the rest strong. of my life. I'm gonna get that yeah. twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'll be 75. Yeah. 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 Beat up. Good hard 20. A billion now? Hell. Matter of fact, I get this billion. I'm I'm probably going to be out here quicker than that. But I know I'm going to have to take a fool. I'm going to have to take a fool. Because you're going to make it. (laughs) So, Tommy, 20 years. So, at 76, you're gone. You know, I I had a good run. Let me tell you something. I'll be out here, be like Delonte West after the 20. Y'all have store tell. You'll be seeing me everywhere. You'll be seeing me. Wasn't you the billionaire? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was. That was me. <laughs> Got I'm licking it all on the back and they would have yeah. it, man. I'm clowning, boy. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's last ask the one. millionaire. Did he yeah. answer? Steve? Yeah. Would you? Oh, no. I'm going to take a I'm gonna just live financially comfortable. For the rest what? of your life. Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah. I got 40 more years left. We do this whole 40. You see, you, yeah, you know, so all you got to do is, like, I can stay right where I am right now. Oh, hell yeah. Yes. I'm going to ride this on out. Just like this. Oh, no. you can but you want to be a billionaire so big. Yeah, I'd like to have a billion, but not not and cut my life short. <laughs> yeah. no, no. No, 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 you're not going to no, die. You're just going to be you're not dying. You're just gonna oh, be I'm not going to do that. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Not not at 86. <laughs> I ain't got no money at 86. I can't stop right. these people from washing me. You mean to tell me what? 
Y'all you know finna send me where? <laughs> I don't like this home right here. That's all. We all right. Coming up, coming up uh, at 49 minutes after, we'll uh, have our last break of the day and we'll close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Sign, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is... He's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so Steve, before we get to your closing, uh, top Republican hopefuls for the 2024 presidential race vowed Friday at the NRA at their annual convention in Indianapolis, of course, that's the National Rifle Association, to defend the Second Amendment at all costs. Okay, you got that? Suggesting that new gun control or firearm restrictions in the wake of mass shootings around the country would only hurt law-abiding gun owners. Former President Donald Trump crowned himself as the most pro-gun, pro-Second Amendment president in the nation's history. He says, quote, I will be your loyal friend and fearless champion once again as a former 47th president of the United States. Some of the Republican politicians speaking at the event said they were saddened by the recent shootings, but they don't think gun restrictions are the answer to mass shootings. Just FYI, the NRA was a key backer of Trump's uh, 2016 campaign of $30 million. They're the key backers of all Republicans. Yeah, yeah. That's why all of them, for the Second Amendment, stop saying you're saddened by the recent shootings. But you don't think restricting gun sales will stop that. What do you mean you don't think it is? If you ban assault rifles, you can't come in there with that rapid fire stuff. You don't think we have a better chance of surviving? You don't think if we took those guns off the market that it would be better for those of us all you hear, every time you hear about these shootings or anything, it's an assault rifle. All, almost 90% of them are assault rifles. What do you mean? And why are we selling assault rifles to the general public? And stop lying to the people. Ain't nobody talking about your right as a homeowner to protect your home. Ain't nobody talking about that. Nobody's talking about that. And even though we're saddened by the mass shootings, you ain't that damn sad because you just said you would protect the Second Amendment at all costs. That includes the lives of children, women, blacks, gays, Jews, whites, anybody that ain't related to you. That cost for you is not too high. It's just a life. Hmm. It's just their lives. You just say it. See, you can't lie. You can't say you'll defend the Second Amendment at all costs. Then turn around, we're really saddened by the recent uh, mass shootings and all, but we don't think that banning assault rifle sales was going to stop that. It's going to deny people their rights. So here they come for Donald Trump with $30 million. And it's way more than that, y'all. That's to Donald. That ain't got nothing to do with the senators, the congressmen. That ain't got nothing to do with that. They giving away so much money. And like they said, you just heard them. We will defend the Second Amendment at any cost. And the cost we're talking about is human lives. 
that ain't a high enough price. Let it cost that. So what? We're going to defend you. Why are there nothing but Republicans at the NRA? Tell me that. Because that's who getting the money. Man, they don't give a damn about nothing else you're talking about. This country stinks with this thing, man. This Second Amendment stinks. And this country stinks. And those of you that are Republicans who get pushed into the Second Amendment, whether you want to or not, because of all the other beliefs. But that's, you know, it's almost like how they do bills when they bring a bill up to Capitol Hill. They don't just bring the bill. They put a whole lot of other stuff in it that makes it hard to pass the bill. So what you see on the face of the bill, the reason a lot of times it don't get passed is because of other stuff behind the bill that they stuffed in there. And they just hope you go to sleep on it so they can pass this bill that's the face of the bill, but really up under the bill is a whole lot of other stuff. Well, see, so that's what they've done to Republicans, see. They put enough stuff to face the bill, like they, they want to be against immigration and they, you know, they want to be for abortion rights and, you know, they want to stand up for things that they think are trying to say morally uh, the right thing to do. But then they push some immoral stuff in there, like letting anybody buy these guns and go anywhere and shoot anybody they want to. They put that in there, too, but they wrap it up in a bow and they call it the Second Amendment of the Constitution that your old ass forefathers wrote. Hundreds of years ago, that's archaic. And you know why it was cool 100 years ago, 200 some years ago, or whatever, hundreds of y'all wrote this little piece of paper? It wasn't no assault rifles then. They didn't have none. They had single shot muskets. Everybody can get one. Yeah, get your gun. You got to kill these animals. You got to kill all these people. You came over here and took these Native Americans' country. You got to kill them or else they're going to want their land back. You got to do some killing, man. But now y'all done messed around and found a way to sell all these extra guns for extra money, and you done wrapped that up in the box, and you call it the Second Amendment, Amendment, the old, archaic Second Amendment. It's old. It was meant for single-shot muskets. It was not intended for you to be able to go and buy a gun that can fire off 90 rounds in four seconds. That's, what's, what's the problem? Oh, this America, that's the problem. Have a great day. Y'all talk to God. He'd love to hear from you, Dale. Okay, peace. Hi, this is Chelsea Handler. And I'm Catherine Law. We are the hosts of the Dear Chelsea podcast, where we give advice to real life people. Sometimes we have experts. Sometimes we have celebs on helping us. Guests like Ross Matthews, Matthew McConaughey, Juliana Margulies, Gwyneth Paltrow, and so many more. We answer questions on anything from drugs to relationships. We've even broken people up. Yes, I take a lot of credit for breaking people up. I am a relationship wrecker. And just motivation. Sometimes people just need a kick in the ass, and that's what I am. And we encourage people to live their lives truly, fully, and bravely. Listen to Dear Chelsea on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What if I told you there was more? to the story behind game-changing events. Get ready for my new podcast, That Moment with Damon John. Every Tuesday on the Black Effect Podcast Network, we'll jump into the personal stories of some of the most influential people on the planet, from business moguls and celebrities to athletes and artists. Join me every Tuesday for That Moment with Damon John on the Black Effect Podcast Network, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you go to get your podcasts. On Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that puts that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. You can listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your favorite shows. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. Each episode explores a long-held family secret that has finally come to light. 
Find out what keeps millions of people tuning in to hear astonishing stories about the secrets that are kept from us, the secrets we keep from others, and yes, even the secrets that we keep from ourselves. I hope you'll join me and my extraordinary guests for this new season of Family Secrets. Listen to season eight of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.